Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. It's a dream. We start like that. I nope. think we should start again. <laughs> this is really After playing so long together, I can imagine that uh, you feel very free in the stage. Mm. But where would be the place that you, when you play the music born? Welcome, Yara. Welcome, Samantha. You are in the tuning show. Well, we are here in the Echo Sound Sculpture, uh, exactly what happens in our living room sessions, to do our tuning show. We are tuners, TV presenters, uh, cleaners, and a lot of things else. Coffee makers? <laughs> coffee ma did, did we make the coffee? I offered no, you and I didn't no, make it. Okay, I offered the coffee and I didn't make this. Fine. All right. <laughs> guys getting music first huh? because I think music came first and instruments for you huh? well I started playing the, the recorder Blockflöte in German uh -huh. age six I believe and then my music teacher in the elementary school actually told my parents that music wasn't for me wasn't I wasn't supposed to play music because I wouldn't follow what he was saying I wouldn't like practice what was what was told to us um, but I just continued banging on all, all kinds of things that were at home, built like little pot, pot sets and stuff. And age 10, I got my first drum kit. And oh. that's how I started playing more and more music. Yeah. And, and then suddenly you were walking the streets and you saw the handpan, or that was in the YouTube? No, on Corsican, the beautiful island of France. Yes. Um, I was at a camping spot and I was playing djembe and an old French man came to me and told me to follow him. So I went and he had a Swiss friend, a Swiss percussionist um, named Beat Fermi, which by the time I thought was hilarious because his name is written B-E-A-T, uh -huh. Beat. Beat. What a name for a percussionist. <laughs> well, he had, he had some first gen hangs and let me try them. That was in 2005. Okay. Yeah. And you, Samantha? Which question first? Music? Music. Music. So I've been playing music since... Yeah, pretty much since I could talk and move myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think the earliest memory that my parents have is me coming back from a Christmas play and having like a little one octave kids keyboard and being able to play um, the songs that we'd been doing, like note perfect and just without having any idea. I think I was four uh -huh. or something. Um, yeah, and then started to get um, keyboard and piano lessons age seven, and then I found the clarinet at age nine, and yeah, it was just a really easy and natural passion for me. It was just always like anything that made a beautiful sound, I was just really drawn to. Yeah, and I feel that it's until today now, because you sing all the time when you are around, <laughs> and you are always happy, and it's very really nice to see that. Mm -hmm. And the handpan? Yeah, so that's a funny story. Um, I, yeah, I didn't really know much about world instruments or much about world percussion or anything outside of the classical realm, really, until 2020, well, 2019, I started the search for, no, not 2019 or 20, 2009 Nine, or yes, 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 okay. <laughs> what year is it? Where are we? Where am I? Long drive today. Um, yeah, 2009 I started the search for my biological parents, I'm adopted, mm -hmm. um, and in 2010 I finally got in touch with my biological father and he sent me a link out of a YouTube video of him playing a hang. Uh -huh. um, so that was the first I ever saw of the instrument and the first I ever saw of him. So it was this two like kind of very new experiences at once, it was really weird. It's like, what the hell is that thing? And hey, he's got my nose. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> much the thing. Um, yeah, I was completely smitten with the instrument from then, pretty much. And then you 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 play his instrument on that, or you found your own? Yeah, I found my own mm -hmm. um, a couple of years later. So I think 2012, I was borrowing a friend's instrument that I met randomly on a train. He had an old space drum, 
borrowed that for a bit just to have fun with it. Yes. And then I had a barley steel. And then I finally got myself a, an Asachan in early 2013. Um, yeah. And then it's just been like... <laughs> and then you met him in the, in the, because of the instrument. Yeah. yeah. We met at Hangout UK in 2014. Uh -huh. For nearly nine years or so, but I'd never really joined the community. I, mean, I met Ezan here in May 14, and I'd met a few people along the, along the way, on the road. Uh -huh. When playing around, you meet a lot of people on the streets, but I'd never really joined an event. And in 2014, I went to Hangout UK for the first time and met her yeah. and a lot of other awesome people. <laughs> <laughs> but only one became my wife. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then suddenly you become um, Asher and Trip. There is what, one or two CDs already recorded with this name? Yeah, two. The third one's coming. The third one is recorded mm -hmm. but not yet released. Yeah will be a f few months yeah it was quite quick actually the musical connection between us was really clear from the start there was um, actually how we met was at so at Hangout UK but obviously there's a lot of people right so you don't really get to spend a lot of time with everyone and it was only until really the last night mm -hmm. that we really sort of spent any time together and it was yeah quite a lot of us left um, at the fire on the Sunday night mm -hmm until as the night went on and then gradually a few people you know sort of dissipate and go to bed after way too much wine and then there was three of us left and it was me Yaron and a good friend Rob Rob um, Senior Rob Senior we mm. miss we miss you Rob <laughs> miss playing <laughs> and um, yeah Rob comes from really close to where I was living so the two of us would meet up regularly and then Yaron said that he was um, going to stay around in the UK for a little bit longer and it was his first trip to the UK and I just said yeah if you want to come and visit and play some music with the two with yeah as the three of us it would be really uh, awesome to hang out with you hmm. and he turned up and uh, we spent a whole week together as the three of us playing music like really geeking out with so the first Anne's connection and between the two of us was m only music pretty solely. much and then we spent more and more time and yeah, decided to spend even more time. Even more time. And then so go so the, the first together. marriage was a music marriage, almost, oh, yeah. you can say that. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. It was music first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is uh, something that I think it's very interesting is that um, uh, you guys always bring other instruments. And so when uh, mm -hmm. we see your concerts, it's uh, uh, Samantha with the famous flutes and uh, you much, uh, sometimes with the, the bedding ball. And uh, this, is, this is very cool. CDs. Uh, you first prepared all the. You had already the music prepared, or you sit to write the music, so you, and and this mix with crazy instruments. It's both. Yeah. Sometimes totally. we we decide to write something, or one of us comes up with something, and then we work on that. Sometimes pieces happen over the course of like half a year playing an improvisation that becomes more and more set over the time playing it more and more. Mm -hmm. So both ways work. Yeah. yeah, but this time we, for our third album that we've recently recorded earlier this year With Thomas um, Bentoff Yeah, with Thomas Bentoff in Israel um, We took a three month travel trip where we travelled with one handpan um, Which was an ACL and an A penta scale, mm -hmm. an A pygmy, which is a pentatonic scale anyway mm -hmm. um, And we just took a few different instruments that were easy to carry, small mm -hmm. and tonally matched with each other Yes. So we kind of went, yeah, we just, what did we choose? We, cho we had the ACL, yeah. um, a little frame drum with a snare that you could opt to put in and out so it was another texture, a little sansula, a few shakers, and I had like four different types of flutes with yes. me. Yes, and, and a jaw. And, uh, yeah, and a jaw harp, yeah. and our voices. And the music is born in the strip? Yeah, totally. During the travel, okay. yeah. So we set ourselves this time to find spaces to really sit and work on the music and then obviously travel, be inspired by surroundings and then again stay somewhere, work mm -hmm. on the music. 
But it was the first yeah. time that we had a concept like that. Yeah. So okay. And it was really nice because then just having the one hand pan and then the other instruments that go with it, it really allowed you to dive further deeper into that one scale of like, instead of, ah, oh, nothing's coming, just take another one. Yes. You know, and then just, oh, let's just switch instruments, maybe something comes. But it was really forcing you to, yeah, dive deeper and find... Yeah, things. because it's a challenge. Yeah. Sometimes the, the, the handband players, they have a kind of a style. And uh, when you change the instrument sounds, they change the music, but the style is the there. Style is the and when you have one instrument and you need to do different music, it's, uh, it's really uh, interesting. Yeah? And you realize it's not as limited as you think it is. Like, you can just choose to not play one note and leave that out the whole time and then come back with that note later and it completely changes the character, mm -hmm. which can be really exciting or like playing around only on the harmonics to give a completely different texture or... And how, how is this, um, because when you are recording the CD, then you have a, a third person there normally, you know? it, uh, sometimes it's an engineer, sometimes yeah. it's a friend, yeah. uh, you, you feel that this the three times that you, you tune, there's a big difference between these three times, or that it's the third person involved more? Uh, it depends on, like the first time it was uh, Jeremy Diffie actually in Australia, in Melbourne, yeah. that we recorded with, and um, we had only known each other for four months or so, five months maybe, and traveled Not together long, for, for, sure. for two and a half to yeah. three months. So that was a very new experience anyway for both of us mm -hmm. in that setting. Um, second time we recorded at home for me in Germany, in Kleve, where I'm from, with a um, sound engineer that has a, an awesome studio right around the corner. So it was again different being at home and going to the studio every day, so to say. Mm -hmm. And um, he'd leave us often and decide on takes or leave us leave the take running and we could just record and see afterwards and now with Thomas the third time was um, he's very much into the same music as we are he plays frame drums himself he plays mm. with uh, flute players and has a long experience with the hung and hand pens as well so um, yeah it was nice to have him kind of as a semi producer even he had some very valuable ideas that he contributed yeah, it was to a totally the, to the recordings. really amazing experience working with him because you just had that, that you know, that openness of, of, you know, understanding the music, but also kind of when we would get ourselves a little bit stressed because maybe the take wasn't going to plan, then he'd just be like, you know, chill and yes. really be able let's to step in. Let's, let's take a yeah. break. Yeah. Let's maybe yeah. come back. Let's uh -huh. try something else. Um, yeah. And really be able to give suggestions. And also there's... Um, one particular piece on the new album that um, is just a flute and a frame drum. And for us, like, when we're playing it, it's really, you know, it's full. But to listen to it, he's like, you know, maybe it might, it's a little bit thin. Maybe it needs just a shaker. And just having that idea of coming in there mm -hmm. with something else. And yeah, at the time you were like, no, I don't want yeah, yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, but it, it, it's, it was fun now. I think I was only able to work with someone like him in that sense to allow the input because yeah. beforehand if I wasn't sure what I want or what I don't want I wouldn't have like I might have done things that I would have regretted afterwards or yeah. whatnot mm -hmm. and this time around since we've been playing together for five years now four and a half yeah um, it's quite settled like we know each other very well in the playing um, improvising or playing pieces we know what's happening so yeah it was it was really fun allowing that input from someone else mm -hmm. but cool and who do, do the arts are of this idea this this time close friend of mine it's okay. actually his ex-girlfriend yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's, a, she's she's a wonderful person paula and um an amazing amazing artist mm -hmm. um we're really excited about the artwork for this oh, yeah. one it's again very different and something that we've always liked to do with any of our artworks is leave it up to the artist yes it's like we give them a little bit about of our idea maybe mm -hmm. where we've been or what the sound is about um, and on this occasion I just sent her a few photos of the trip because we'd been all across yeah we'd been around Southeast Asia and in the States and then obviously also in Israel um, and yeah she just had these photos to go on and, and I'm really really mm -hmm. loving what she's made out of it 
Yes, very cool. Uh, and these these travels that you are telling now, uh, it's uh, always going to festivals, or you have your own uh, shows uh, happening, or there is a little bit of mix of everyone, everything. Well, this time it was uh, <coughs> the start of the festival uh, of the travel was the Pan Siam festival yeah. in Thailand, um, organized by Hon On and Desan, mm -hmm. which was an awesome start. And then we were in Thailand yeah. already, so we took time to travel around, and the next thing that we had for certain was um, Pantasia in the States um, two months later. Two yeah, this, this, so this, this idea was about taking the time to really create new music. Um, but usually it's that we're invited somewhere, we might organize a few things around it and then you know we have another place, we kind of get like an outline of skeleton and then we fill it up along the way. Yeah, but um, last year we've been traveling so much only for concerts mm. or festivals that this year, in the beginning of the year when it was European winter we were like let's just stay in Southeast Asia for a yes, while and uh -huh. enjoy yeah. Yeah, without too much plans. Mm -hmm. And it was technically our honeymoon. Oh technically yeah. Technically. <laughs> come home after the seasons what what uh, what you miss he's the baker who likes to make everything yes, all like yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I think it's to do with the German I mind think I remember this one when I came to pick up the come back next time for more if you like the show please subscribe remember to click the bell and stay tuned <laughs> <laughs>